Okay, I'd like to call the committee of the whole meeting for Monday, October 17th, 2022 to order. Roll call, please. Mayor Gafino. Here. Trustee Carroll. Here. Trustee Curtis. Here. Trustee Gately. Here. Trustee Lowry. Here. Trustee Nedfedge. Here. Trustee Salazar. Here. Okay, audience comments. <clears throat> um, they want to speak. Item two. Okay. All right, Trustee comments. Okay, discussion item one, Steve. Thank you. Item number one is uh, we're starting our tax levy process. Uh, the first part of that process is an estimated property tax levy, and our finance director, Jason Paprocki, is going to take us through a proposal and talk about the schedule for actually approving the tax levy going forward. All right, thank you. Um, I put an uh, updated copy of uh, the memo I provided earlier. I noticed the error in it today, uh, actually an error for the for the better because the numbers actually went down. So um, the, pres the presentation and the memo will not match uh, what was in the packet previously. Um, so just to kind of start us off here tonight, we're gonna uh, present the calculated levy estimates. Uh, at the next board meeting, we'll bring back a uh, the approval of the tax levy estimate. We'll put the truth and taxation notice out to the newspapers. We'll have the public hearing on December 5th um, for the uh, the tax levy, and then hopefully pass it uh, later that meeting. Uh, just a recap of the 2021 tax levy. Uh, the village extended a levy of 2,690,000. Um, of that, that was based off a 1.4 CPI a percent increase and new construction. The village actually extended 2,661,553 of that uh, amount, basically because of uh, it was capped, the increase was capped uh, by PTEL. Um, of that amount, 53% related to the police pension fund and funding the pension. Um, so then tonight we're gonna be talking about the 22 levy, which is then to fund the next budget year. Um, just a quick overview of PTEL, uh, the property tax extension limitation law, um, but for non home rule communities, we can only increase the levy by 5% or CPI, whichever is less. We are able to capture any increases in EAV related to new construction on top of that. And then the PTEL is not really catch up. So if there's any part of it we decide not to take this year, it's basically use it or lose it. We can't go back the next year and say, we didn't take X amount, so we're going to take it again this year. So it's just year by year, however much we can take uh, in the levy increase. And then just giving a, a brief history of CPI. Over the past nine levy years prior to this current year, CPI has averaged about 1.6%. Um, there was one year in 2000 for the 2018 levy, the CPI was 2.1%, but the village did not take that. They only took the two point or the uh, new construction amount. Uh, so when we're now looking at this 22 levy year, CPI was 7%. So we'd be capped at five, a 5% 5 levy increase if we wanted to go that far. Um, and currently the way things are looking with the uh, September CPI numbers that were released, I think just early this week or last week, uh, CPI is at 8.2% this current year. So we might be in another situation next year where CPI is going to come in over the cap. Another uh, item that affects the tax levy is the uh, estimated EAV. So King County released uh, estimates of their 2022 EAV. Uh, which projects the village's EAV to be 655 million, which is an increase of 7.6 from last year. Um, of that, 502,000, 502,800,000 million 800 is related to residential. Um, also, within those numbers, there's an estimated 6.9 million of new construction for those. Um, it, when you back the new construction out, the existing property increases are about 6.5 percent, and within that. The residential portion of the uh, existing construction went up about seven percent from levy year. So, so we're going to see some uh, pretty significant EAV uh, increases with this levy. Uh, the other portion would be the new construction I mentioned, six point nine million of that six point five is related to residential and four hundred thousand related to commercial. Um, using looking at these these estimated figures from Kane County, they project to add about just under twenty nine thousand dollars of additional property tax revenue. Uh, to the village. Um, there was one year in 2018 where, that I hadn't noticed uh, mentioned earlier where the village did not take the CPI increase. The village only took a 0% CPI in new construction, but you see the new construction that year was, was fairly significant and added nearly $60,000 um, to the tax extension. Um, and then one, one additional uh, factor that, that kind of weighs heavily in the property tax is, the, is funding for the police pension fund. Um, we just had the 22 
uh, actuarial evaluation completed recently, which gives us recommendations on how much to fund into the pension. Um, the village has a funding policy to be 100% funded by year 2040. The state minimum is actually 90% funded by 2040. Um, so we, we want to get them more on a more aggressive scale than what the state's minimum says we have to do. Um, the funding recommendation go, did go from 1,443,000 to 1,652,000. So over $200,000 increase um, this year related to the pension funding. You know, there's really a few items that are affecting this. Uh, the actuaries went out and they were, they were looking at the, the various mortality tables, retirement rates, disabilities, and what they're finding is people are living longer, they're retiring early, they're not getting hurt on the job as much. So that's just more longer people have to be basically drawing on pension. So that actually added increase to our pension. Um, another thing is the investments. The investment returns didn't come in what they what they thought they would. We were at 5.65 actuarial value versus 6.5. So basically, whenever we don't hit that six and a half, it's got to be made up somewhere and it gets made up on the village's side of, of things. And then we also had a disablement of two active employees that helped increase that that contribution number. Um, so what that kind of did was we're still about 63.5 percent funded, but our net pension liability went from uh, went up by four million dollars to 14.8 million. Hey, Jason. Yeah. What what is built into that increase of four point one million? Is I mean that seems like it's pretty large increase for one year. Did we add a significant amount of staff, or what's contributing to that? No, it really just ties into some of those, like I mentioned, assumption changes that increased the recommended contribution. The same thing had a, an additional effect of just it's going to be more more pension for a longer period of time if people are are living longer, they're retiring early. Um, we have two additional now. Um, disabled members so you basically when they go disabled they're going to take a pension then you got two additionals coming on so it's just more pension to pay out essentially so that brings us to estimates on the 22 levy so the first column i have here and the first line is the 2021 tax extension so as i mentioned two million six hundred sixty one thousand so if the village took a zero percent cpi and just added new construction we'd be at 2,690,000, which is essentially, which is the same levy request we had last year. Um, but we would be increasing our revenue about $28,000. Um, another option we could do is we could say, we'll take 2% of the 5% available CPI with the new construction that would put us at at $2,744,000 uh, levy, levy request, which would be about an $82,000 uh, addition of revenue. And then the fifth is if we said we're taking the full CPI amount and new construction, we'd be at 2825 which is $162,000 increase in, in the tax extension. Um, our recommendation would be taking the 2% CPI. So we'd be leaving um, part of that CPI increase uh, on the table for the uh, CPI uh, recommendation. Hey, Jason. Mm -hmm. What was the percentage increase in EAV over last year? Because I know property values have you know, considerably increased in the past couple of years. and We were 7.6%. Okay, so we're getting 7.6% more revenue based on the increase in EVA or EAV, correct? Because um, if, if the EAV is increasing, we're already kind of getting a pay raise, let's so say, so to speak. Well, the ta yeah, the tax rate would go down um, with the EAV going up especially if we're asking for this essentially the same thing so but our net revenue increases just because of the increase in eav correct it should yes okay so how Basically, did you come up with settling on the two percent versus the zero percent looking at the fact that we've already gotten an increase from the eav that, that that's something we'll get into i mean i was going to get into later just some additional factors we're looking at uh budget wise of how we, we decided to go for that one jason i have a question before you proceed so mm -hmm. when you say taking new construction can you clarify what that means when you say so taking the new construction into the equation? So it was new construction that wasn't on the tax bill yet. So we're trying to capture the value to to bring it into the, the that will be taxed for this yes, year. It so will you'll be, be getting it will, be, okay. it will be taxed, but we're just trying to get it on now. That's what I thought. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Um, and just breaking down the levy, the two million seven hundred forty four thousand eight hundred thousand dollars of it would basically be for general fund purposes, which is general operations, IMRF, social security, police protection, and audit. Um, the majority of which would be going to the police pension fund. 
um, 1,653,000 to match that 100% funded recommend, recommendation. And the remainder of it would go to our insurance fund for basically liability insurance and unemployment insurance purposes. Um, so based on that $2,744,000 levy request, the tax rate would be estimated at 0.418. So down below, we took a just an example of a $300,000 home as part of the last uh, levy year. Assuming that's going to increase those numbers I mentioned earlier of the 6.5% of ex existing construction, we'd see the, uh, the average $300,000 house last year be about $410 to the village, now going to $423 to the village. And then some additional factors, the special service areas, these are the amounts we levied uh, last year. We're currently investigating, you know, are, are these the same amounts this year? We do expect the Willow Lakes uh, levy to be increased. That's primarily for uh, some fence maintenance replacement. Um, so we're trying to decide on a number there of what's going to be necessary to, to help with that fence. And then Messenger <laughs> Public Libraries estimated 22 levy, 2,017,000, which is an increase of 3.8 from their last year's extension. Um, so I mentioned we had some some items we were looking at as to why we were going looking for the two percent increase rather than just taking the zero, um, and and a lot of them are going to affect the budget going forward. I mean, as I mentioned, the, the police pension um, contributions went up two hundred thousand dollars, so that they're going up more than we're projecting the levy revenue to even go up. Um, on top of that, we just have normal salary and benefit increases, whether that's the union uh, nego union contracts, uh, just step increases for employees. COLA increases, increases in health insurance. So those things will also be going up. Um, during the budget, we mentioned potential for some new positions we're looking at, whether it be human resources, economic development, code enforcement, some assistance at the police department. So we'll be looking at at some, some additional positions within the village, um, just general rising cost of goods and services as we're going out and, and just doing things with the village, everything's starting to cost more on our side as well. Um, revenue uncertainty during due to the uh, recession concerns. You know, I know revenue, especially sales tax revenue, has been increasing significantly over the last two years for the village. You know, when we did put the budget together for this current year, with just kind of the way things are going, you know, a lot of our revenue had been the increase has been going with cars and, and auto sales. Um, we pulled a lot of those revenues back, thinking things might start correcting itself, and especially now, if, if way things are going with interest rates, if a recession starts to happen, we might see some. A downtick in some revenues related to income tax or sales tax. So um, just keeping keeping up with the property tax levy could help offset some of that. Um, capital funding, you know, we have a lot of, whether it be the public works building, uh, road improvement projects, we have like a lot of things lined up uh, related to capital that we still want to make sure we're able to fund. Um, and then water rates, you know, water rates have within the village have it increased for a very long time, and we'll probably have to start looking at that. So, you know, we didn't want to go recommend a, a full 5% and then also go with looking at water rates if we had to increase for some of the water funding. So we thought it'd be a number that would kind of keep us on pace with a lot of things we also have within the budget, but not you know really going after taxpayers at this point, trying to um, increase their, their tax bills. If there's any questions. Uh... Yeah, I would just like to point out, you know, going back to the whole um, EAV issue, taxes are done in arrears and when you take a look at the the values in the village i mean they've gone up over 22 percent in the past two years um so looking forward into what we're projecting for next year are you projected projecting a, again another significant uh, significant increase in eav yeah i mean t the eav will probably will will affect how much each taxpayer so i mean the village will set its levy of if we wanted to hold it Hold it steady. We'd say the two million six ninety, um, and then it just wouldn't be capped. Like last year, you know, we said two million six ninety, but that number was above our PTEL cap. So they came back and said, nope, two million six sixty one is what you get because you you asked for more than basically you're allowed to get. Yes. I guess my concern is that your recommendation is at a two percent, but historically we've been, I think it was right right around one point six percent. One point six given. So now a, we're getting a an increase in revenue from EAVs this year. We're projecting an increase next year, and now you're asking for a rate that's above what we've had historically the past ten years. So I, I guess I'm not following why we need all this additional money. I mean, you're laying it out here, but looking at the economic climate we find ourselves in, I mean, should we really be asking for anything more from our residents? 
I, I would tend to agree. I mean, if in here we're expecting a recession and we're saying we're potentially going to increase water rates and uh, any money we can save the residents, I think is a good thing. I think the village is in a lot better position than some of our residents will be if a recession hits. And I think uh, I, I would like to save them as much money as possible. So I think the confusion here is that EAV going up doesn't automatically equate to taxes going up. The village levies a dollar amount. That's our request. The, if we request we're capped by how much we can ask for. But just because property rates go or property values go up doesn't mean we're collecting more taxes. You still have that, to ask for more. How does that make sense? Because, you know, 10 percent of 100,000 is more than 10 percent of 90,000. You're keeping the rate the same, but you're increasing the value, so you're getting more money. So, so, so think of the, the levy request as the numerator, and then the EAV is the denominator. So, we're asking for a a, a levy two million six ninety. If the EAV goes up, all it's, you know the bottom number goes up. All it's going to do is just make the the tax rate lower. So, we're we're still getting the two million six ninety. It's yeah. just how it's being spread. To each each person differently, so it doesn't affect how much money we get or we ask for. So if we it just lowers zero, the tax rate. If we did what we did in 2018, would there be a significant detriment to the village its financial position? So, the way we lay this out is historically we've we've given a CPI increase of this is CPI this year. Does the village board want to approve the CPI request? This year, knowing that CPI was above the 5% cap, I've never been in my tenure here has never been this high. So we looked at it and saying, okay, we even looked at it on what if every taxing district asked for 5% because we were cognizant of the fact that we don't want the residents to have that kind of tax burden. So what we looked at was start with what's nominal based on the average we've had over the, the last 10 years or nine years, which was 1.6%. The police pension contribution alone is going up more than what we'll be collecting, even if we took the full 5%. I mean, even the full 5% is still well short of what just the pension contribution alone is going up. So there's definitely justification for the dollar amount. We laid it out in a way differently than we normally do by showing you the zero, the two, and the five to at least give you options to discuss tonight. Steve or, or Jay, uh, Jason, do you know approximately what that would mean for residential it's for homeowners right not the businesses or per per household what would you i, I honestly i know it's based on the, the property value but like on a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollar home what, like what would the increase be for someone in a, a house yeah, so with the, an EAV of two hundred thousand the numbers i yeah the numbers i included I can't here see are it, sorry no yeah they're they're, they're very okay. very loosely based on the the eav estimates mm -hmm. king county has so once we once on. those are finalized we'll kind of we'll have an idea as to what the actual rates are but we're thinking a 2% would be on a $300,000 home, assuming the home go value goes up the same amount EAV is projected to, about $12, $13 a year on the village side. Obviously, all the other taxing bodies, I'm not sure you know what your tax will go up, but just related to the village, about $13. <clears throat> That's the problem. We're not the only people that are going to be increasing the CPI factor. And I think, you know, I agree with Mark too. I mean, I, I don't see any reason for us to take anything above what we've taken in the past 10 years, which is the 1.6. I'd like to see it at zero. So, else? well, I, I, I just, just so that I'm clear as well. So I've noticed, you know, over the years on tax, my tax bill, and I think this kind of explains what I think you guys are just trying to say is, um, my tax bill has gone up a little bit every year, like everything else, but I have noticed the overall tax rate fluctuate quite a bit over years. <laughs> and I'm assuming it's because of exactly, Steve, I think what you said is the village, all, all the different taxing bodies set a dollar amount mm -hmm. for the year and whether it, which, which is a total number increase. And then like, if, if your home value goes up 50%, which is obviously doesn't happen, your tax rate then will be way less because they only are still looking to capture that little bit more money from you. So I understand what you're saying, Laura, as far as EAV going up 7%, but that doesn't mean our tax bill is going to go up 7% already automatically. What'll happen is the tax rate will go down 
No, it's going to go up. No. No, it's going to well, go down. It's going to go no. down. It's it's going to go down. 1. 6, if it's at one point six and goes up to two, that's an increase. Well, no, I agree with that, but it's not our tax bill is not automatically going up seven percent because our value of our home is going up seven percent. It's in the middle of forty year high inflation I, with a predicted recession coming, and it's not just our line item that's going to increase. Now you've got the school district, the I'm library, having a hard time the, here in you know, fire department. You've got all the other taxing bodies. I absolutely agree. I just so twelve dollars for us on top of let's say. 70 for the school district and 10 for the fire department who just passed a referendum. You know, again, we don't, we're in a great financial position. EAVs are going to go up even higher next year because like I said, I just ran the numbers the other day. The village is up 22% in, in um, median home price. So we're going to continue to see this at least through next year. So that's why I'm arguing. I don't think we should be taking anything. We've got a higher EAV. We've seen an increase in new construction, an increase in commercial and industrial properties. Why should we add one more dollar for somebody in the village to have to worry about paying? And again, I, I see, I, I agree what you were saying. I, I completely understand. I, I, I would have a problem too going up to 2%. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't mind sticking around with what we've been, but again, higher I don't know, I guess in my, maybe I'm being confused, but higher EAV next year doesn't mean my tax bill is going to go up a dollar. No, but it doesn't think... mean it's going to go up at all. It's going to go up 12 if we do the 2%. But our, you know. Well, okay. the thing that's got to be considered here is, as Steve said, just the pension contribution is going to be well above what we're going to get from this increase. Plus, you have raises coming, you have new positions coming, you have the cost of increase you know, it doesn't, it's not even going to cover that. So yes, the village is in a good position, but by not taking the 2% now, we're going to sort of degrade our position a little bit by doing that. So it, it, it's, a, it's, it's weighing it out, right? I recognize I, I'm not necessarily in favor, favor of weighing taxes, but you have to remember how much more the village is, is going to be expending. And if you then have a recession, which hopefully it's mild, that's what they're predicting, you're going to have some decrease in sales tax for, for the North Aurora Auto Mall. You might have some decrease from Woodman's and things like that. So for me, it's a balance and you have to consider everything. And like you said, just because the EAV is going up does not translate into a lot of tax dollars for us as the village. Yeah. I'm, I'm also, my, my, uh, my concern would be if, again, I'm not, I don't know that I'm necessarily in agreement of going up 2%, but if we stick at zero to this year, in a couple of years, we might have to go 3% or 4% or something like that. Okay. So we, we took, we took zero in 2018 and we didn't have to do anything out of the ordinary in 1920 or 21. So I, I understand the concern, but historically that hasn't been an issue. I, I understand that too. I, like I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm in favor of a 2% increase, but I think a zero, zero might, might be a mistake uh, in the future. That's 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 yeah. where I'm at. Um, I'd like to say, ask some questions first. Um, I noticed that about, let's see, uh, three out of the last 10 years, it was over 2%. Can you explain why some years it's 2%, some years it's 1.4%? Sure. So that's the annual CPI. So the average that Jason put up there, the 1.6, is just the average over the last nine years. So CPI fluctuates every year. And as uh, Jason explained earlier, the under the PTEL law, what happens is we're capped as a non-home rural community. So we can never raise our taxes more than 5%. And we can, if it's, uh, if CPI goes above 5%, like it did this year, we're still capped at 5%. Are these figures in this, in this graph here, are they, um, what was raised, was that a raise each year in taxes? No, those were actually what the uh, CPI was for, for the year. So those are the percentage CPIs. Um, Trustee Curtis was alluding in 2018, there was a year that we did not take the CPI request. And um, so that chart is actually just what the percentage increases of CPI were year over year. Okay, well, let And me... it fluctuates, it goes down one, two, 3%. It's never been this high. And like we said, in, in a number of years, right. and Jason went back quite a bit. Well, I was, when I read this at home and it's trying to figure out what this all meant, yeah. it's kind of difficult for me. Um, I was very much against the 5%. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when Jason mentioned 2%, I thought, well, that sounded reasonable to me because a, a number of years that's been what it's at, it's been at that figure. 
Um, so I probably uh, would be, uh, I think that uh, Todd's uh, position, and I don't know if Laura's at 1.6%, if we stay at 1.6%, which is our average, mm -hmm. uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, but I'm also okay with going with the 2% as well, uh, because I don't think it's that much of an increase. Uh, did you say that the going from 1.6% to 2% will cost the taxpayers $13 a year? Is that that, does that figure? No. No, no, I no. think what he was saying is going from the current amount that you pay in your tax bill and raising it by the 2% is the $13 for the year. Hmm. So how much is that difference? So from 1.6 to 2, are we talking $2 or? It, it could, yeah, it couldn't be more than a few dollars yeah. on average. Yeah. A year. Yeah. 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 I, I'd be okay with the 2% myself. That's, uh, but I'd also be okay with the 1.6%. So that's kind of a... And we, we, like I said, we laid it out this way um, purposely because it's the first year that we've been in this situation and we're likely to be in it next year as well. Um, our village has a high dependency on sales tax revenue. So that's always something to consider. The Obviously the police pensions going up was a consideration. Uh, future employees, everything goes into this. And if you look at the dollar amount, what really is interesting is, is that we're capped and so some home rule communities, for instance, and we've had this conversation before with a home rule community, you could take a zero this year, you could take a zero next year, but then three years down the line, you can raise taxes five, 10% if you wanted to, because we're capped, you're only limited to CPI or 5%, whichever is, is less. So for us, if you don't take any of that, you never go back and you can't get that increment back. Hey, can I ask you a question? Are, do you know whether the park district, the uh, fire district, are they capped at 5% as well or the CPI? So they're having the same conversation and we're betting that they don't go all go to 5%, which if they do, the tax bill is going to increase more than $13 in, in here. I, I, for years, I've heard people, we're always going to get the complaints because the vill everybody complains to the village board because they don't, nobody understands their tax bill. We take the smallest cut generally of if you look at the itemization on their tax bill. But if we can save taxpayers $13 on a $300,000 house, uh, I, I think it's $13. It's money in their pocket because every other public <laughs> entity, is going to look at 5% or 4% or 3%. They're going to take the most that they can gouge people. Because that's just generally, they've all got big projects. And and and, want to, and that's my concern is that we're going to, um, I mean, it's $13. But it's still, if we increase water rates and, and do that, anything we can save the taxpayers, I think we should. How much is it? How much is it with uh, at one point six percent? I don't have that here, but I mean, it, it just be a little bit less. I mean, well, and, and let's not forget the increase in revenue that we are generating through the three percent cannabis tax, and now we've got Verilife, you know, expanding. You know, we shouldn't be looking for revenue primarily from the home homeowners. We've got other, you know, revenue streams that are increasing as well. So, you know, I'm going to argue all day long that we shouldn't be doing anything to add one dime when we've got other forms of revenue coming in. So we shouldn't be relying just on the backs of homeowners. We've got a 3% cannabis tax. We've got Verilife increasing. We've got other revenue streams coming in. So I'd like to see us kind of take the shift away from residential and, and let's do what we can do to, to grow our income in, in the other areas. Can you expand on the 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 sales tax for the the car uh car lots over there i know i think everybody's saying what we all i think we all agree nobody wants to raise taxes so it goes without saying i do think it's 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 important though like when we have these debates over six hundred thousand dollars of sales tax and this and that you know there's some debate over do we want to allow these businesses and it's just it makes a difference down the road and today where the rubber meets the road is here we go we're going to try to ask taxpayers for money and um, when we debate over having businesses come into town, I mean, it, it does affect the bottom line. So, but I'm interested in hearing uh, the car lot. You said it had an extraordinary year, the auto mall last couple of years. And do you feel that's going to continue on? Or you think that's not going to continue on? Where are we at with that? Because we are enjoying 
a good sales tax revenue right now, but oh yeah, I mean sales tax revenue, sales and cannabis tax combined right. have gone so up. So which when I agree with dollars, like said yeah. the rest of the colleagues here that if that should be the one carrying the freight, not the taxpayers and the homeowners. But do you think that's going to continue or that's hard, you know, that's hard to say with kind of with way the interest rates are right now and, and the cost of borrowing money. Are, are people going to want to keep buying at the rate that they have been buying these last couple of years? And I mean, like I said, in the budget, we projected the sales tax to go down a little bit this year versus last year. I mean, last year were some of the highest years the village has ever seen in, in sales tax collections. And you know, to say that's going to continue and keep going, it, it might, but I think we're betting right now that it's probably going to come back down a little bit at least. I mean, we, we're in a, based on the presentation tonight, I can say this, having gone back and forth with Jason several times on how to present tonight, it obviously was the effective number to put out there because we looked at it and said, we have the financial ability <coughs> um, based on our revenues over the last few years to take a zero. But you also look at the amount of uncertainty and the amount of pension increases and everything that we know outpacing the 5% and inflation. And just look at the cost of our projects that we're bringing back um, to the board for approvals. So there's obviously justification for over 5%. So 2%, basing it off of what our historic average is around, we knew this is the first conversation I've had in years where it, it was going to be a good conversation. And, and that's what we're having. Well, Steve, the other taxing bodies? When do they, are they on the same sort of mandated schedule to make their decision yeah. as we are? So in other words, we wouldn't know what the, the county or the other taxing school board, uh, school district. The only one we know of right now is the library. And that's because um, they're a village library. So they actually have their levy approved by our village board. And uh, I think right. it's 3.8. 3.8. is yep. what they were looking at. What was it? 3.8%. 3.8. Yeah. Okay. That's but we don't, we're looking for. so we wouldn't know like as we wouldn't know to be able to use that as a contributing factor for our decision, what they're doing, because we're all on the same sort of schedule. Okay. Can I ask? We're really only talking about $53,000, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the $53,000, we sat here a couple months ago and listened to the cannabis presentation. They're going to increase revenue over the next few years by 25%, which is going to be increased tax base to uh, the village. <laughs> um, we've got all these gambling uh casino or uh machines that we're approving in these businesses and <clears throat> we'll make up fifty three thousand dollars from our businesses I, I mean to me why would we put that burden on on homeowners when we can make it up from our businesses we've got two new businesses that are about to open on orchard road we just did uh, another business, a ribbon cutting a couple of weeks ago. The, the village is doing well. Our businesses are booming and, and people, the, the residents are clamoring for more business and, and because they're, they're overtaxed and overburdened. And if we can save them $13, we should do it. Uh, what was that? Did you figure out what the difference was? It, it'd be, it'd be eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 decrease going to 1.6 from two. Our levy request. Mark? Well, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the police pension. Of course, I like to see them fully funded, and I um, I think that's important. I think people want to stay safe in our households. People want a policeman. The police are viewed as a huge attribute to our village, so I want to make sure that they get taken care of. So that's what I care about. I want to make sure that gets done. If we go to zero, did you say if we choose zero this year, we can we're stuck at zero for eternity? No, what happens is so the total dollar amount with five percent is if we were to collect the full five percent, it's one hundred and thirty three thousand. The two percent is fifty three thousand. And if we collect zero, obviously no one sees an increase from the village unless um, I mean, it's not you can't guarantee it because people like Laura said, your property values are depend, you know, they go up and down. So your bill fluctuates a little bit, but we would be essentially asking for $0 more than we asked for last year. The uh, new construction would be something that I think we would still ask for just so we don't lose that opportunity to put that on the books for the future. So that would only be taxed on new construction. Um, it wouldn't be part of the CPI increase. So originally when we had our conversation, I was at zero as well. Um, I can agree with Trustee Carroll's for 53,000 in the climate, the economy, and 
you know, way everything is that it'd be, um, you know, a nice, um, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, but gesture from the village that it was at zero this year and, and, um, you know, see what next year brings, I guess, but we do have, you know, new businesses as well. And, uh, you know, 53 grand. So $12 is $12. Now my concern is it adds up to hundred dollars after the school district and the park district and King County and the force reserve. And when you're on a fixed income, you know, hundred bucks is hundred bucks. So I don't know if we can come back with something else or what's the temperature. Everybody here, we Go to two percent, one percent, zero. After after really looking at it for fifty three thousand dollars, I I I would agree. It's I no no zero percent would be great. I mean, including new construction, I what is that another twenty eight thousand or something? Yeah, I mean, I'd be good with zero percent for new construction as well, or have them well pay in and zero for our current zero residents. for current and yeah, and then just add in the new construction. Yeah, right, right. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Zero. Okay. As long as the budget can stand it, I guess I can't complain. It's certainly going to save 13 whole dollars for everybody. Uh, the, the thing that bothers me is that their property value goes up maybe 30,000, 50,000, and we're talking about $13 saving. So that would be one argument against it. But I have no problem. I'll kind of just kind of feel what the <coughs> most of the board wants to do, and I'll just kind of go with it. So I'm good for 2%. 1.6% or the 0% if that's going to be able to be fit into our budget for this year. My only concern is something I still don't quite understand. If we go 0%, how does that limit us in the future? You've, uh -huh. I know you've explained it, but I did so not it, quite grasping it, doesn't, it. Yeah, sorry. It doesn't limit the village in the future. Um, it just next year, our starting point, when we start to look at the levy, is going to be the same starting point it was this year. Our, our didn't go up. So we're not capturing that $53,000 difference, next, right? So, I mean, we're not right. capturing the $53,000 this year Addition. or compounding next year and every year into the future. It's, that's just 53 oh, this year, and then we just never grow upon it ever, like ever again. So it's just once we're passing it up this year, we're passing it up basically forever with yeah, any yeah. So, you're, so you're taking the risk or your or the equation or the the gamble or whatever you want to call it is that is the sales revenue is not going to go down dramatically and you say fifty three thousand dollars in the scheme of things but if we lose the you know you do it now or you you know you're forever forsaken from taking it and then that's fine with me i would go with zero based on you know vera life opening up the new facility and um you know, fingers crossed that we don't go into a recession. I don't know, but the automobile, I don't know how people are buying cars right now with the percentage rate that it is. It's just amazing to me. But um, next year we come back here, it's for one year. It's a one year decision, right? And we come back here this time next year. Uh, we cannot make up the 2% that we didn't take this year. So I guess if, if you're willing to say, well, if we really get clobbered next year and the sales tax falls, you know, through the floor, then you have to take the, you know, position that, well, we took the chance that it was going to be okay and it wasn't, and we didn't take the 2% when we had the chance and now we're going to have to raise it more. So that's, that's the decision you have to make. You take something now or you don't. And then a year from now, you may have to take more than you really want to because sales tax went down so much. Right. So we have to, okay I'll vote for zero. zero. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine to do that. I'm just, I'm yeah. just trying to make the, maybe I'm just trying to clarify it for myself. But that's the way I see it. It's it's just a, it's a it's an unknown. Um, but I think that we can all agree that I, I don't know. To me, it's just common sense that the automobile cannot possibly generate what it has in the last couple of years. The interest rates are what seven point five percent or something like that. Or I mean, they're very high, and so I just can't see that the rate of sales is going to continue the way that it was. But if if, if the consensus is is that we want to go to zero, but still take the new construction, I would agree to that. questions no i think we have direction so the the timeline is that um we'll come back and we'll do a zero with new i think it was zero with new construction is that correct yep. yes okay so then the next timeline is first meeting november it comes back it gets approved as an estimated tax levy then the final tax levy comes back for uh, final approval in early december all right thank you all right under discussion item two steve 
<coughs> Item number two is regarding the North Aurora Town Center. Uh, Mike is going to give us a brief presentation as the owners of the inline stores between JC Penny and Target are looking to uh, do some subdivision of their plat. Yeah, so we're talking about North Aurora Town Center, uh, more specifically the space between Target and JC Penney. Uh, the, the that portion of the property was recently acquired by Rhino Investments, and they're actually looking to subdivide the tenant spaces uh, between Target and JC Penney. Um, town Center is located in a PUD and, and governed by an annexation agreement. The Actual subdivision plat would be considered a minor change, would just be required uh, approval from the village board uh, because there are no deviations uh, from the underlying zoning or the PUD, which wouldn't re so wouldn't require a full public hearing. Uh, again, just consideration for the village board. Um, but but at the risk of sounding redundant, I'm going to let the property owners go through their presentation. And um, if there's anything that they admit, I'll go ahead and uh, fill in afterwards. So with that, you guys can go ahead and present your information. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, uh, council members of the village. Uh, John Wall, Rhino Investments Group. I uh, stand before you today to talk about North Aurora Town Center and our goal to uh, subdivide uh, the one lot. So currently, you're, we have uh, one lot there. We control um, the property between Target and JC JCPenney's. Uh, it's an inline space. It's about 16 acres, currently one lot now. Um, the one lot also includes a parking area, uh, south of the inline space and rear building driveway access located to the north of the inline space. And I can show you that now. So that's our parcel there. Uh, this center is governed by an OEA, which we can talk about. Basically, that's just, you know, easement rights, cross connections, travel, uh, <laughs> maintenance of the center uh, shared with Target JCPenney. Um, but we man it, we are responsible for this portion you're seeing here. JC Penny and Target own their portions as well. I'll take it to the next one. Uh, so here's with an overlay of our goal to turn uh, to subdivide this <coughs> property. Uh, you'll notice some single tenant boxes here. You'll notice some multi uh, tenant boxes here. And on the next slide, I can kind of give you a little update on what we'd like to do. So we're trying to turn one lot into six. This is a common practice that we do across the country. Um, this allows us the freedom and flexibility to help uh, bring in REITs, um, real estate trusts uh, into markets. Uh, that helps with long-term ownership. Uh, this also allows us the chance to um, find local buyers uh, that are more boots on the ground uh, and close to the market. Um, generally, the, the REITs prefer the larger single tenant boxes and the multi-tenant strip usually goes to those smaller buyers we're talking about here um we don't have any plans to sell right now we're actually in the process of refinancing this property uh so putting you know two years of debt on here um and if you kick it to the next one for me thank you uh this will show you what our goal is so our goal would be to create lot one which is the parking lot uh, I know some comments were passed around. We first bought this center. We bought this center on auction and uh, we sent an email and received some feedback and it was, it, it hurt to hear, uh, but it was that this was kind of the forgotten shopping center in North Aurora. Um, so, you know, we went in, we brought on our third property management. Uh, we got them involved. We started getting to work on leasing uh, in that packet there this is a large packet you guys have, but there's some information on where we're at with leasing. Um, I included in this presentation as well. Uh, maybe you can kick to the next one for me real quick. Yeah. So when we bought this center, uh, it was about 75% occupied at the time. Uh, we bought it May 24, 2021. Uh, since that time, we've worked really hard to uh, extend leases with our current tenants. And we've also been out there with leasing brokers uh, trying to bring more business to North Aurora. Uh, we we we've recently uh, signed a 10,000 square foot lease with Kids Empire, it's trampoline park concept, and Hallmark. Um, so that'll bring us to about 90% occupied, which is the highest level that we've seen. Uh, it's been leased in quite a while. Uh, we've been able to work with the UFC, you know, bouncing back from COVID-19 and fitness closures uh, to keep them there and keep them operating. Um, so it's our goal to bring long-term stability to the asset here. Uh, 
and kind of piggyback from your conversation earlier, more tax dollars for you guys to talk about next year. Okay. Okay, to the next one for me. Thank you. So these are some pictures we actually took today, went on site. I just want to kind of show you guys some differences. All right. So this is uh, our parking lot, our portion of the parking lot. This year we spent about $65,000. It was in the initial letter uh, that we sent to Mike um, with our plans and our budget to, main, to you know, bring, it, bring it into better shape. Uh, so full reseal, full stripe in the front and the rear of, the, uh, of our property. You know the next one for me, please? Thank you. Uh, down our dry aisle, you can see the rustic fox there. Uh, this is empty tenant space here to your left that we do not own. Um, next one, please. And then we get into the areas that we don't control, right? So this is looking at JC Penney's parking lot. This is what ours looked like before we spent some money this year. You know, next one for me, please. There's another picture of that. Next one for me, please. There's a target center. <clears throat> Should be the last one. Is there one more? Yeah, that's it. So, you know, we care about the center 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 is important to us and, and we're doing our best, uh, to bring it back to life. Um, I know there were some concerns about us chopping this thing up and selling it for parts for short-term profits. That's not our goal. That's not what we're trying to do here. Um, we're following our business model that's worked effectively in many other municipalities across the country uh, where we buy larger centers, we replat, we subdivide them. Um, it gives us freedom and flexibility with our lenders, with our banks, and with our relationships we built with REITs and other buyers across the country um one thing we do and you right, that's perfect you might ask me why why is the whole parking lot a lot one on here uh really what what we found that works best to can keep the maintenance together and to keep the property um looking the best is we carve out lot one <coughs> and when we do go down the road and if we do sell off pieces then usually we put a declarant in place and that declarant acts as kind of the manager or the director of the property. Um, they usually own one of the multi-tenant boxes and the parking lot. And they're responsible for making sure that everybody else contributes to the cams and the maintenance of the center. I have a question on that setup. Yeah. What, what incentive, what is going to incentivize them to make sure everybody else is doing their part or why would they want to take on that responsibility every property owner pays towards cam costs and every tenant pays towards cam cost so you get a cam audit you can go through and look at those numbers um uh, cam means common area maintenance thank you yeah so everyone every business or owner pays into the common area maintenance cost but, but why would one tenant want to take on the responsibility of managing the entire development <clears throat> That tenant would take it on to make sure that the rest of the center and the rest of the people in our property um, make to keep the. Oh, sorry. Yeah, come on up here. I, I can answer that. So typically what you'll see is like you go, you go to any shopping center, you drive right through it and you may not realize that a lot of times um, retail centers have multiple owners and the owners. Uh, are uh, typically choose uh, one owner uh, to manage the overall center. Um, in this case, uh, what we would do here is have uh, most likely the uh, the owners of the multi-tenant, because typically those tend to be more um, on uh, hands-on managers that would manage uh, the um, uh, the parking lot, but it's every single owner if, if this were to be broken up at some given time every single owner would be required to contribute into um, the, the the maintenance fund and that declarant would be responsible to, to perform all the maintenance and typically uh, that would also be um, uh, left to a, th a professional third-party manager like we have uh, right now um, at, at the center so there's really no loss of continuity of management there's uh the, the declarant would be responsible for enforcing any particular uh, uh provisions um that that are contained in in this oea it's not our intention to change any any of the elements of the oea as that would require uh you know target and, and jc pennies uh but what we typically do is we'll overlay on top of it 
additional responsibilities uh, to make, to ensure that the uh, the uh, the operation and, and easement agreements are being um, you know uh, adhered to you know you know per pursuant to these uh, recorded uh, documents. I guess my concern was you know you're aware we've had issues with the parking lot you know having a lot of litter and trash and things like that. So now and that's only with a single owner, single entity uh, maintaining the cam. So now if you're subdividing it, now we're going to have separate ownership of separate parcels. What guarantee do we have that this problem is going to get better and not worse? Um, a lot, lot of it has to do, a lot of it has to do honestly with ownership, All right? We'll, we we are value add developers and operators. So we typically go into centers that have not been operated efficiently. A lot of times uh, this is a result because a an owner is, uh, has acquired this at uh, such a high basis that the value is no longer there. They tend to lose um, uh, interest in, you know, in, in investing in dollars. We typically buy at, at lower basis, which incentivizes us to continue to, to add value. Um, another another large issue that we see with uh, centers of this where you know, you're at coming in at 40%, 50% of occupancy, uh, when there isn't a tenant, there is no, there is no revenue to uh, perform uh, these these to pay for the operating expenses. So as you increase the overall occupancy of the center, more more revenue comes in. So well, a lot a lot of times what will happen is when vacant when when occupancy goes down, uh, owners tend not to want to spend money. You can look across the street uh, all those empty buildings uh, uh, next to where the rustic fox is along that line. You can see they are not. They're not spending money to maintain it as the way you know, as as you you would all expect, um, and that's because there's no revenue coming in, so they're just trying to keep it down uh, to to the bare minimum. So, what what when you have the occupancy, when you have multiple ownership, um, you have more stakeholders, right? Uh, a lot of times, and I don't want to get too technical, but a, a lot of times you'll find yourselves in a situation where. Um, and I believe we have it here where um, the declarant has lien rights against another owner if they don't make the contribution. So they they can, there's incentives to make sure these monies come in. Um, and quite frankly, and so you, you asked about the, what, like what's our incentive? Um, the, the A shopping center has an intrinsic value based on returns and, and, and how risk is looked at. So what, what we have found successful for us is when we um, are in a situation where um, we can unlock value, meaning that some of the larger single tenant buildings will sell to large institutions who value that more than if that, um, if that property was at, as a whole. And so what that does, it, those higher values uh, lowers our basis, if you will, on the rest and allows us to, to uh, continue to in, in, in invest more dollars in what would be the lesser valued. So it's a it's a strategy that we've used nationwide. Um, we've been very successful with selling off uh, at some point uh, um, some of these larger you know national tenants. Uh, but we've also been very, very active. And our, our primary concern, our primary activity has been uh, not only leasing, but maintaining um, the occupancy at that property. I, I would like to see, I mean, there, there's simple things that I think need to be done to sure. help with the, the trash problem. Mainly, we need to, if you could, I'd like to see some garbage cans installed. Well, we do have garbage cans. They're out in front of every every center, of every every tenant space has. Uh, when when we hired uh, Hiffman to, uh, to manage the property, we actually took the garbage cans that were behind the center and moved them to the front. Um, uh, and we also have regular maintenance. I, today was a kind of a blustery day. I'm so in that for... development every day. I go to UFC gym, uh -huh. and I'm, I'm I'm appalled at how much litter I see in that lot. Specifically, when you're driving in and out, it just seems to gather <laughs> around well, the perimeter. Got to remember, we 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 manage the middle. We can't control what comes across from J.C. Penney. We can't control what comes across from uh, from Target. But we do have our third party manager. We go out, we come out at least once a quarter to make sure that you know, everything is, is being maintained. We have we make sure people take pictures. So and send it to us to make sure that uh, they are adhering to their responsibilities under the property management. I, 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 so 
just to understand, you're basically condominiumizing these units, right? So you yeah. so they can sell off individual at, at some point. Yes. And, and if somebody buys a unit and they go out of business, they're still responsible for the cam expenses, right? Where yes. where now you have a single owner, and if there's a, a tenant that's vacant or or building that's vacant, you're not getting any revenue generating that's coming out of the owner. And the other incentive is if you have seven different owners, presumably the six other owners are going to put pressure on the one owner that's not paying their cam expenses or not holding up their their part of the bargain. And there's certain contractual legal property remedies to hold these people accountable. I think if it increases occupancy, um, <clears throat> what I would like to see, though, if you drive in there, I mean, and this is not your fault, you just bought the property, but it's very institutional <laughs> when you drive in there and, you know, there, there's 9,000 or however many parking spots in there and there's zero green grass or green space or medians or anything that's attractive to the eye. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, you own, you're going to subdivide that lot one. It'd be nice to put some like grass medians in between the parking spaces or something that makes the center a little bit more attractive. Um, I, but generally I'm in favor of the concept because I think it's just going to add revenue to the village. Um, and, and just to be clear though, you guys don't own lots six, seven, eight, and nine, right? The empty, where the rustic foxes, that's not part of this. We we don't own those now. Okay. Yeah. Do you have I have a question? Do you have like businesses interested in this your subdivide? Do you have that, that are like you're uh, recruiting or but, yeah, like that's my question. And, and, and at, this, at this point now we're so so early on it. What we've been what we where we spent our time is making sure that the center is being maintained. Uh, it, that it's being actually operated. Um, you know, we've spent um, you know significant <laughs> dollars not on the outside, but also on the inside. We had, you know, there was serious leak, you know, roof leaks and mold, and we had to kind of clean that up. Uh, we've been also uh, very. Uh, we spent a lot of time keeping the tenants. Um, some of those national tenants were already they were ready to leave the center, and mm -hmm. so we spent uh, a significant amount of time in the last year negotiating with uh, you know the. With the Michaels and and um, you know Bed, uh, I think is it Bed Bath? No, um, Pecos. yeah, Peco. We we've been working with all of these. We have you know relationships, and we convince them to stay. Um, and and so that was been that's been a big part. So now we're at the, now that we believe that we have the occupancy stabilized, we start looking at different elements of what our long term business plan is. And typically, a you know a subdivision uh, is 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 one of those elements. How but big right is now, that? Right now, we're really focused on operations. I'm oh, sorry. How? What's the square footage on? Uh, it looks I can't see it. I'm not. Maybe I'm not reading it properly. Uh, One hundred twenty-six thousand square feet. Okay. And you're going to divide it up? Yeah. It, yeah. You have you. That's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. There it is. I didn't see that. Anything else, Mark? So you don't know. You don't know what businesses that you're trying to to, to recruit to come or. Oh yeah, we're actively in lease negotiate in lease negotiations. So uh, do you have businesses in line and say this was okay that they're going to come and? Yeah, so in the last business. thirty days, we've actually signed a executed a lease with uh, Kids Empire, which is that trampoline park I mentioned. They're taking ten thousand feet there, closest to JC Penney's. Um, and then we've signed a lease. I think it was for four thousand feet with Hallmark. There they're right there. kind of in the left there in that multi-tenant strip. That's where they're going in. So we're we're down to about seven thousand feet of vacancy now. Yeah, that's all questions. I, I think it's a great concept. You know, I a couple of my thoughts living here and going there. Um, I agree with Trustee uh Curtis as far as the trash. I mean, the and the grass, like along Orchard Gateway. I mean, the grass gets mowed like once a year, you know. <clears throat> and this all leads to nobody wanting to go there. You know, it has that institutional look, like Trustee Carroll said, that you got 30 foot wide sidewalk in front of these buildings and that's all you got is concrete if you go like the geneva commons i don't know if you need island berms with grass because it's a maintenance issue but even if you had like <clears throat> and i'll tell you how to do your job but potted plants or things that make it inviting up then that sidewalk area where you feel like it's kind of a special place or an outing versus um 
yeah, just going to some concrete place and going in and getting some fish or something, you know. So, um, and then the other thing is the, the snow. Um, it's like an ice skating rink there in the winter. And again, you want to know why nobody comes because it's treacherous going through the parking lot. There, all three people, you know, pennies and target and that middle section is just, I think they plow it only out of necessity when somebody complains and the ice is four inches thick and uh, it's kind of bad. So, I mean, you know, those are you, some good ideas from people here that go visit it. And, you know, so, but I think concept wise, it is great. And I'm glad you found a couple more tenants and hope you fill it up and do well there. So what, what's the communication chain? If we were to have a code enforcement issue, we call the third party, we call NA Hiffman, or would they then contact the declarant? Is that how that chain of command works? Um, these up would be the actual tenants. Another yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's the most basic, but you could always call us. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're the, we're, we're we're ownership. Um, and it's a it's a it's a small small group, but we 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 address issues pretty quickly. Okay, thank you. We, I, I assume you're setting up these leases too, so you can market them for sale. I mean, the individual units. I you, I heard you say you don't have any intention of selling now. But I mean, that's kind of the idea, right? They make them more marketable. It increases the value if you separate the units, and and if you have a lease already already in place, you're golden. Uh, so, I mean, I assume that's the end goal, right? That, that, that would be the long term plan. Yes. Yeah, I, I would say um, it, it's it could go either way. It could go we we could find an owner user, um, uh, but right now it's. The most of the activity has been on the, on the leasing side, um, but yeah, cer certainly that is uh, you know that's a potential play. We're we're not honestly we're not going to do anything for 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 quite some time um, because we know this is a long this is a long process. Uh, we are you know we're putting long term you know, debt on this property, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna be here for a while. Um, so you know we're our our biggest issues are just to make sure that again that we have. Uh, this project stabilized and we're doing the thing and we I, we do appreciate all the comments because you at the end of the day you, you're the ears and eyes um you know we're we're, we're you know a few hours away on, on you know we can get here in, in, in a day's moment's notice but it's really good to hear um the feedback and uh jonathan and i were i don't you meant you mentioned the uh the 30 foot sidewalk we were actually talking about that as we were driving driving today is you know, how do we kind of create some articulation um along along that long line so we're we're, we're in the same same mindset there right. well it looks good to me i think it's fine hey mike uh, i got a question just curious what your do you have concerns yeah you know originally we did um you know i mean my first concern as i laid in the staff report was just general maintenance you know if you you have a lot of suburban tumbleweeds out there with the plastic bags blowing around um which again they said they can't uh they can't help <laughs> Um, you know, typically we've had issues with lawn maintenance and trees. I will say, though, this this particular property, um, even with the previous owners, wasn't really the issue that we've had out there. And I don't want to put that on anyone else, but this this property has not really been a nuisance in comparison to some of the others. Um, so that was just my concern being that if if you have you know five different property owners now or six, who am I contacting with code enforcement issues? And then, you know, that that was a major concern of mine. But, but talking through some of this and kind of looking into the background, um, there's no owners association. I did look into the owner's easement agreement and it talks about like with the development itself, um, having an one central operator that is in charge of managing the the 10 plus pages of maintenance um, required. And then it does talk about litter and trash. Um, but I, I don't believe there is an operator. So it sounds like everyone out there is just sort of on their own. Um, so, you know, just having someone that, you know, I can, I can contact, whether it be their property management group, um, they, they, you know, offer to call them directly. Uh, just someone that I can contact that can be out there on short notice to take care of any maintenance issues. Uh, that was the first concern we had. Um, second was this cross access. Um, they're the, the overall OEA provides access between the different properties, you know, between Target, JC Penney, and the inline stores. Um, but then you, we didn't want to remove any legal rights for it, through the subdivision for primarily in the back on the north side for lack of access. So there was no if making it illegal for them to 
pass between the different properties, uh, but the actual subdivision plat has cross access, uh, you know, blanketed on there so they can travel freely between the different properties. So any concerns I've had at this point um, have been addressed. Um, it is a little bit of a leap. I've never, you know, seen this happen in, in my career, but uh, just kind of learning what to see what it's all about. I just make one more comment. I think that the the fuller we can or the more tenants we can get in there, then hopefully in and the more aesthetically pleasing and maybe we can get some of those empty in places that you don't control fill up as well. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the benefit is if it looks vacant, you're never going to get anything in there. But if you've got uh, an active shopping center <clears throat> that will only promote the Best Buy, the the other empty units that have been sitting there for years. Yeah, if you remember, yeah, we progress did, breeds progress. Right. We did we did that in economic incentive agreement with UFC Gym. Again, they weren't providing any sales tax, but that was the whole goal of that thirty five thousand square foot user was just to bring life back to the center. Um, so that is the, ultimately the goal. Mike Carolyn. Uh, I, I don't see any issues with it at all. I don't see any downside to not doing it. So why not? It's going to, the, the potential is um, there. So I'm with it. I think the more businesses you have, the more businesses that want to be there because it looks like it's, you know, thriving and people are going there and the more traffic that comes, the more, <clears throat> more than, you know, people who want to lease there. It seems to me that the very long-term range, you own all of those lots now, you subdivide the lots at some point, I understand it's very way, way down the road. You're going to sell those lots off to perhaps buyers who want them. The lease is already in place. At some point, you envision being completely out of managing and being owning the lots there. Is that what ultimately somewhere down the line is what you're going to do with it? Potentially. Uh, we always, uh, we we debate on a, on a okay. daily basis what, what, what our business strategies are going to be. But right now, uh, I will tell you with the type of financing that we're getting, we're, we're going to be here for a while. Yeah. So um, Trustee Curtis asked in, in the very beginning, the declarant who owns uh, the lot that then is kind of responsible for taking care of and managing the CAM. Is there some incentive for that? You know, what is the incentive for that business to buy that lot and then take on that extra work? Is there some incentive for them to do that? They're certainly compensated. Uh, the way the way okay. these um, these common area maintenance agreements work is typically an administrative uh, charge as a percentage of, of, the, okay. of the costs that that defrays their administrative. That answers some, the question. Some, okay. some use it as a profit center, but uh, a, a lot of times it it, it, it I mean, for something like this, uh, it's this is not a very complicated deal. So I would imagine that this is probably a, a little bit of a money money. Right, maker, so it's a monetary but, incentive yeah, to do it. Yeah, okay, yes. thank you. All right. Be good with what we said. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, all right. That finishes up item two. So motion adjourn to uh, exec session and to discuss land acquisition. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same thing. All right. playing tonight. Uh, LA.